Mr. C in the place to be, Irwin Academy, coming at you with another advanced, not really, lesson. As you can see above my bald head, it says base clef. See right there? Base clef. Don't worry about everything else. It says base clef. So we're going to be taking a look at notes on the base clef. Oh my gosh, right? Yeah. And uh, right there, it says mostly for bass guitars. Dot, 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 mostly. Why? Because... We don't do notation in rock band. We do learn the instrument, play, and perform. Okay? As much as I would love to take my time in 10 months, we don't have time to, unfortunately, follow a notation in rock band. So I'm going to take the time and get you guys a head start now. So this why is this going to be beneficial to you as a guitar player or or a bass player why should you learn how to read sheet music and learn how to read notes why because it can open more doors for you that's why um you want to get a job as a studio musician a lot of the times they will hand you a piece of sheet music paper and say here you go um i need some bass for this song okay now not all studios do that but there's a good possibility you want to go and play bass or play guitar in college most of the most likely they're gonna give you sheet music i'm like 80 percent sure about that okay um you want to play in an ensemble you want to play in some type of cool group an official group I'm not talking about rock bands and stuff like that sheet music okay um bass clef is universal this also works for my trombone players it works for tuba players it works for uh baritone horns bass clef bass guitar any type of bass instrument this notation is going to be the same okay as you can see right here i got my bass club set up i got a different version of face and every good boy type thing going on right here it just doesn't match up with the lines and that's because this is not treble clef right here this is not a c it's a e and then f g a uh e f g a am i missing one i am missing one. Oh. Ooh, I'm missing a note. I'm going to fix that in a second. Okay. Um, anyways, it goes in alphabetical order, starting from E. We're following the musical alphabet, not E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. No. Okay. Um, a, B, C, D, E, F, G. So E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay. And yes, I am missing a note. So let's take care of that right now. Which one am I missing? I'm missing the G. I do not have a G. Let's take care of that. I do not have a G. G, A, B, C, D, E, F. Because F clef, remember the dots? Shows you every note on that line is an F. And then we got G and A. There we go. Now, I have trouble reading bass clef. Why? Because I don't push myself and challenge myself enough to learn it. I know I could survive. Yeah. You know? Um... If I have some bass clef music, honestly, if somebody hands me a piece of sheet music and, and it's in bass clef and says, hey, here, I need you to play this. Okay, I know how notes work, but I, I, I'm I, very slow at reading bass clef notes because I'm so used to seeing treble clef. That's why, okay? Um, if I have a minute or two, I can write out every note, and I know that's, that's not good. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be writing your notes, but, you know, that's how I would survive learning how to read these two clefs and learning how to read bass clef so late in life uh, i'm kind of getting old and stubborn okay but for you bass clef people why is this going to be useful uh you could play in our jazz band i would love to have some awesome bass players and some awesome guitar players i know we're talking about bass clef but um we uh got started with our jazz band last school year and we had a couple of our students playing there we had a couple guitarist and um one of our guitarists ended up moving to bass and it was it was great and i'm sure all of our sixth graders from last year would agree it added so much having the guitar and the bass with our jazz band so if that's something that you want to do you want an opportunity to do something different something that you've probably never seen or experienced before learn this because jazz band that you're going to get sheet music and it's going to have notes and as a guitarist and a bass player you know, yeah, I'll be there to help you, you know, but I can't be there every second to help you. So I'm going to expect you to be able to figure things out and I'll help you as I can. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at what we got. You know, face does not line up. Okay. Um, once again, though, we 
do not have a line through our face. If you notice, okay, there is no line through our face. Drop my pencil. Okay. Um, face has just been moved down one line. Because before in treble clef, F, A, C, E. Okay. So we drop face down a line. That's one of the difference between treble clef and bass clef. All right. Um, this note right here. Ah, my coffee. This note right here for bass guitars. Ooh, it's on is the lowest note that you can go in standard tuning. This note right here is your open E. Let me turn these, this volume off. Okay. This is your open E. When I say a string is open and um, my other bass players, my other bass club people, you can follow along. However, I'm going to be talking about bass guitar, okay? You can learn about these notes. You can get practice reading them and stuff like that. However, when it comes to your instrument and bass guitar, I'm going to be describing how to play these notes on the bass guitar. Cool? Cool. Okay. When a note is open on a guitar or bass or ukulele, that means you're not pushing anything down on the frets. Let me just put this on. I'm going to put it up higher. Then I'm used to... Uh, short guy. All right. Okay. When I'm playing the bass guitar... Okay, if I'm pushing down on the fret... I'm fretting the note, okay? Pushing down on the fret, and then playing the string with my other hand, okay? If I'm playing a string open, I'm not using anything on the frets. I'm just playing the string open, okay? I'm not fretting anything. So this note right here is your open E. That is the string closest to your face, and just play just like that, all right? So, and by the way, just to make things simpler and quicker, I'm gonna be writing how to play these notes underneath the note, and I'm gonna use this method that I use a lot, meaning the name of the string and the fret number, okay? Now, if you remember, hopefully you are, because you guys are advanced players, this is your first fret towards the headstock of the guitar. This is your first fret. Not way the heck over here. No, it's right here, the top, okay? And then you got second fret. Third fret has a dot, and it even, some instruments have a dot right here. I don't think you can really see it. And maybe you can. Okay, there's a dot right here. These are to help you remember your frets. These ones right here are all odd numbers. The one with the two is your 12th fret. Okay. Um, these are all odd numbers. So here's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. But for this. Something that's gonna make it really easy is we're only gonna be using the first three frets or the open string to play this scale. This is a scale, okay? Um, this would be a C major scale starting on the E string. What is a C major scale? It is a C major scale. Yeah, it's a C major scale starting on the E, which is the third step. So we're starting on the third step of the scale playing a C major scale. C major scale has no flats and no sharps in it, okay? So, um, what was I saying? So if I say E zero, if I write E zero, that means I'm just gonna play the E string with no fret, okay? I'm not gonna push any fret down. If I say E seven, that means E string, string closest to my face, seventh fret. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right there. That's what I want you to play to get a certain note. Does that make sense? Okay. But like I said, we're only going to use the open strings, first, second, or third frets. Everything is going to be right here. Okay? All right. So let's get started. To play this note, this is your E, and it is played E0. Cool? See that? I think your screens will be a lot bigger than my phone. But this note is your E, and it is played, let's see, name... How to play. Okay. There you go. H2P. How to play. How do you play it? E string and no frets. Okay. And just in case you don't remember, because I know we all forget. I forget a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Um, where can I write this? I'll write it down here. Okay. So. 
you have E, string, A, D as in dog, and G. This is the floor. This is your face. Okay? The E string is the string closest to your face. Then the next string is your A string. The third string is your D string. And the string closest to the floor is the G. All right? Floor. All right. So let's get back into it. The next note we have, and unfortunately, it's going to be really easy. It's not really going to be much of a challenge. The next note is an F. We're just going up the alphabet starting on E, the musical alphabet, remember? Okay, so to play an F, it's going to be E string, first fret. Okay, now there is another, there's an F sharp, but that's second fret, and this is not going to be in the scale for now. Okay, we'll get to that later. Um, remember, if you are a uh, different bass instrument other than bass guitar, these notes are the same. This is your E, this is your F, and so on and so on, but this part right here is not going to apply to you. Okay, all right. Next, we got a G, the most gangster of all the notes, and it is E3. After that, we have the A, which is A string open. All right. After that, we have a B, a regular B, not a B flat. This is a two. Okay. We're not playing a B flat. We're playing a regular B natural, which is A string. See, here's my face. The string close to my face is my E. So here's my A string, second fret, right there. There's your B, okay? All right, after that we have a C, which is middle bottom, remember that? And a C is A3. After that is a D, which is D open. And then we have another E, which is D2. I know I'm kind of taking up a lot of space. Sorry. Um, F is D3. G is G open. And A is G2. Okay? That's it. That's... Our scale technically should stop right here. But I gave you some extra notes just to kind of keep going with the whole face and every good boy thing. I just see this. Uh, leave a comment if you want to say bless you. <laughs> All right, so in order to play this scale, we're just going to follow. If you have your guitar, if you have a guitar and you want to learn bass, get your guitar. You can play bass on guitar. Mr. Case does it all the time. So do I. Why? Because get an acoustic guitar, you don't have to plug it in. You can practice bass. Okay, that's why. All right. So, open E, that's easy, just like that. E1, E string first fret, that's an F. Next note is a G, E3, E string third fret, okay? Next is an A, which is A string open, okay? After that is a B, which is A2. The next note is a C, which is A3. After that is a D, open D. The third string from your face. One, two, three. Okay. After that is an E. D, two. D is in dog. D, two. F, which is D, three. G, which is G, open. Open G, G, zero. And an A, which is A, a G, two. There you go. You just played a little bit more than a scale. You played, what, three notes extra from a scale? If you wanted to practice this, you'd go... The only time you're going to use the first fret is on the E string. Everything else is going to be second fret and third fret. You're always going to have the open notes, okay? Always going to have the open notes. But every other string is either open, second, or third. Open, second, or third. Open, second, and this one is the one that's gonna be different. That's why I didn't go to a B, okay? But yeah, that's why we stopped at the A, all right? Um, you can play an E from the E, and it's gonna set, it's not gonna sound like a proper scale, 
because technically we do need to change some of these notes. Just understand that you can play in the key of C. You have every note that you need, okay? You have seven different notes. You have at least seven different notes right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So if you really wanted to play the scale and make it sound like a scale, start on the C and then play a D and then go down your open E. Okay, if you want me to show you how to do that, okay, start with A3, which is your C, right here. Then play open D, D string open. Then play open E, then E1 for F, E3 for G, open A, A0 for A, A2 for B, and A3. Back to the C, and there you go, there's your scale. It's not progressive, but it'll work. It's still the same notes, okay? Later on, I'll teach you more about different shapes and how to play a scale like this. We'll get there though, okay? Let's just worry about note recognition, okay? Um, go ahead, if you need this, take a screenshot. Okay, face. That's even better. Take a screenshot now. Okay. Have this and just know, all right? Have this available because, like I said, if this is something that you want to do with um, jazz band and stuff like that, I would love to have you when we're all back in school doing music back to normal how we usually do. It's awesome. You guys, last year we just touched the surface of jazz band. It was pretty cool and... My favorite part about last year's sixth graders doing jazz was those who were brave enough to try to do solos and those that kept at the solos and got better and better and better. Um, it, it was really cool hearing other students try to do solos and those that wanted to keep trying every class and try to get better and I definitely heard some really cool improvements. So I'm hoping that continues whenever we're back in school doing jazz band and stuff like that. So if that's something that you wanna do, it's jazz is open to everybody, everybody, okay? Um, I had a couple drummers in the sixth grade band that would go in the drum room when we still had the drum room and they would work on playing jazz rhythms and swinging the notes and they did really good. Like I was very proud, okay? I still am. I like to I like to brag about my old students and some of you guys that I still have now. So I'll brag. I like to talk about my kids are better than everyone else's kids. You guys are my kids. So, anyways, um, let's do. Uh, I'm gonna kind of give you a little quiz. If this is something you want to do. No, don't stop the video and be like, no, I ain't doing no quiz. It's not a graded quiz. Not a graded quiz. Okay. I'm gonna say a random note. And you are going to be a weirdo and talk to yourself. And if you're a bass player, you're just gonna say what string name and what fret to play, okay? So like, for example, I'll say, okay, let's play a G, low G. Okay, we're gonna stay in this area right here, okay? We're not gonna go up to these notes, all right? Matter of fact, you guys should have screenshotted it, 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 it. Um, let me screenshot it. Cool. It worked. I screenshotted it, it, it while I recorded. I'm going to erase this. And we're just going to stay in this range right here. Okay? From E to E. Just those notes. All right? And I'll stand right here. I won't cover it. I won't. It won't be like a memorization quiz. No. Use the board. That's okay. All right? If it helps you be successful, use this. Because eventually... You'll use this enough to where you don't need it anymore. And be like, I don't need it. I already know this. Okay? Um, repetition really helps with music. Uh, okay. Here we go. So I'll, for example, this is an example. And I'll say, okay, uh, how do you play a G? I'll wait for a second, and then I'll say the answer. How to play a G is E3. It's right there, and it sounds like this. Okay? Let's do it. Here we go. All right, um, how do you play a C? If you said A3, you are right. All right, how do you play an F? 
If you said E1, you're right. How do you play a uh, B is in boy? You know, I'm, I'm waiting. How? How? Can't hear you. What? Oh, okay. If you said A2, you're correct. How do you play a uh, E? Let's go for a higher E. If you said D2, you are correct. If you said E0, technically you're still right, but I wanted the higher pitched one. Okay? An E is an E, the different is pitch. A higher sounding one, a lower sounding one. Okay? All right, how do you play a G? If you said E5, you're wrong. That's an A. If you said E3, you're right. That's a G. Cool. Um, if How do you play a D as in dog? D as in dog. I know. I'm sorry. My head's getting in the way. D as in dog. If you said open D or D0, you are correct. All right. A, let's see. Did I forget one? How do you play an A? If you're trying to be a smart one and you said E5, you're right. If you said A0 or open A, you're also right. More than one way to play an A, but we're just focusing on this and I'm just seeing if you're paying attention, okay? Let's see. I think that's all the notes. We started with C, yeah, that's all the notes, okay? So I challenge you to quiz yourself. Take the, some of these notes, just these ones, Get a piece of paper or something you could write on and write them in a different order and quiz yourself, okay? See if you can do it without looking at this chart. That's even better, okay? Um, if you can do that, you're ready for some jazz, all right? Um, can bass players also read chord sheets? Yes. Yes, they can, okay? But you got to make sure you know how to play the note that they're asking for. For example, if it says, I'm going to give you a ridiculous one, G minor 7. If it says that at the top of the staff, like I said before, that's usually for uh, rhythm guitar players or for piano players. Bass players can follow that too. How, Mr. C? Well, um, for beginners, just play that note. Just play a G. How do you play a G? G's right there. G, E3. There you go. If it goes to uh, C minor seven and then uh, D minor seven, like that, usually the chords on the top of the staff are usually lined up with some type of music note on the chord sheets and stuff like that, okay? So you just follow whenever the change happens. If you have one chord in a measure, you know, measures, you know, like that, the lines on the staff, then that means you're just going to play that. And if, if we're in 4-4, four, four, there's four beats per measure, that means you're just going to play that G for four counts. One, two, three, four. If there's two chords in one measure, then you're probably just going to play each for two counts. said probably because once again usually these chords are lined up with some type of note within the staff okay so that's just something to look for but if you have any questions and you have some type of chord charts like that and you want to and you need help with it take a picture of it and post it in the google class and i will gladly help you out um yeah so this is bass clef if you're still with me and you're a trombone player you are awesome okay i only have three trombone players um and i have i have three or four baritone horn players a couple of you guys but i know you guys are doing the whole uh treble clef except for my my fourth grade baritone player he is doing bass clef because he's awesome no hating okay two ways to play baritone horn they're both great they're both it's an awesome instrument anyways um that's it for this lesson. I hope you're getting something out of this. Um, I'm really trying my best. If 
you have any comments or concerns, please feel free. Don't leave it in the YouTube chat. Put it in the Google class because I'll see Google class a lot faster than I'll see the YouTube chat. Okay. Um, if there's something you're not understanding, please feel free to message me on Google class and I will try to help you the best I can. All right. For now, I will see you guys next lesson.